What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Board Games Are For Everybody, where today we're going to be doing the final chapter of Campaign 1 for The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, The Adventure Game by Bethesda Game Studios and Mophidius, Mophidius, Modifius Entertainment. Trademark, trademark, trademark. Um... First things first, we're going to address something, and that is that I have been playing the game like 90, 99.99999, indefinite 9% <laughs> wrong. Um, biggest thing we've gotten wrong is mostly combat. Uh, I misunderstood how the, I misunderstood how the, the dungeon deck actually works and how scaling of monsters goes. Uh, we really shouldn't have been encountering level 7 monsters while we were <laughs> just starting the game. Um, so I screwed that up. I now know how that works. Uh, we also messed up our quests. Apparently you're only allowed to have three personal quests at a time. So your main quest, as well as two other personal quests, is all you're allowed to have at one time. So we had a bunch of quests going that... I, apparently we only had two quests left. I guess we failed the rest of them. So I guess that's a good thing. We've only got two quests left. Um, what else did we mess up? Most of our mess up, messed up stuff was in combat. The other thing we messed up is that if you enter a hold and you complete a quest in that hold or you try and go for a quest in that hold, you're not allowed to also explore, which is something that I misinterpreted. Uh, so that's something I've made note of. I actually made a big checklist here. It's just a, a quick reference. A couple pages of quick reference for stuff I was having trouble with. Mostly, It's mostly combat. There's like a whole page of combat, basically. Plus the additional info for how many quests we're allowed to have. Uh, this is a lot easier than having to go through the book in order to find stuff out. It also has stuff about the marketplace. It has stuff about... Uh, completing quests and enchanting weapons and exploring and stuff like that. Um, but this is completely useless because we're not going to be using this right now. Um, I I feel like because we've already we've already been doing this in such a weird way, we may as well just finish this campaign the same way we've been playing the entire time. So I think this has officially turned into a house rules. A house rules adventure of campaign one in whatever this weird messed up version of the game is that I'm playing. So that's what happens though. That's what happens the first time that you play stuff. Um, me playing on my own definitely doesn't help. When I read through instructions, it, it gets very tedious for me and I don't necessarily start skipping stuff, but maybe I just don't fully comprehend stuff while I'm reading through it. So Stuff gets mixed up or I think something's supposed to be a different way. So I want to thank the person who actually commented on our chapter. I believe it was the chapter one video uh, and told us basically everything that we did wrong in that video. There were timestamps. There were descriptions of how we need to fix things. And it was in a very nice way it was in a nice way they weren't you know some people <laughs> leave comments about playing things wrong and they make it very they make it very clear that you're inferior to them when it comes to rules but um this person was very uh very nice about it they even said that they looked forward to us playing some more some more skyrim and i apologize to them because they're gonna have to suffer through at least one more video of me playing the game <laughs> incorrectly so we're just going to hop right into things here. We're going to start up with campaign one, chapter three. This is the final chapter of the campaign. And this is officially a house rules thing. So we're just going to keep playing the way we've been playing. And next time we'll either start on campaign two or we will, um, or we will do a free roam in order to get a grasp of the proper rules and we can show all that stuff off. Um, but yeah, let's just, let's just hop into this. Let's, let's get back into our thing here. I haven't shuffled the event decks yet. I just want to make sure I shuffle them the correct way. 
Markarth is liberated from King Madanak and his Reachmen. Peace seems to reign in Skyrim, however, the Blades have been betrayed. One of their own has sold out their colleagues to the Thalmor, and a Daedric prince has become interested in the characters. The prince's voice beckons them to Markarth. Once they arrive, it whispers in their mind and uh, whispers in their minds, suggesting murderous activities. Remove all threat tokens from uh, cards and strongholds, and remove Ulfric's militia from the board. Oh, I guess we're not using Ulfric's militia anymore. I'm pretty sure I set it. Oh, geez, excuse me. I'm pretty sure I set everything up the same way it was at the end of the last video. We still have our our one Daedra, and we have three vampires on the board. We still have our world quests, which I believe stay active. Someone can correct me on that. Uh, and we have our two our two personal quests on the board still, which I have turned into our green, our green markers. I guess it makes sense that you only have three of your colored marker as in, as, as to only being able to have, only being able to have three, uh, personal quests. Ba -ba -ba. The Markarth stronghold is now accessible and can accept Threat tokens. Place all figures in Markarth. That we've done already. Our character is already in Markarth. Oh, I thought I knocked peace. I did not. Shuffle the Campaign 1 Chapter 3 event cards with any leftover cards from the last chapter and place them in the event slot. Okay, so it's the exact same as before. We're just shuffling in the Chapter 3 stuff with any stuff we had left over. Which I think one of our events was actually something from the the box there. So I guess we'll have a random event, a random box event. Everything else, I believe, is just actually campaign three. Okay. Draw cards 229 to 232. Read the titles of the card out loud and, and allow each player to select one. Players can choose between trusting the Daedric, Daedric Prince or seeking assistance at the College of Winterhold. Those who decide to trust the Daedric Prince choose between 229 and 230. Those who decide to seek the assistance in the College can choose between cards 231 and 232. Remain the disc... Uh, discard the remaining cards. So I guess our choice is whether we want to believe this Daedric Prince that's speaking to us or if we want to seek help from Winterhold. Uh, so I guess from the mages in the College of Winterhold. Um, that's a good question, isn't it? That is a good, good question. So let's just grab our cards out here first. So two... 30, 229 to 232 is what we're taking. Uh, 229 to 232. Okay. So, the quests that we have are Assassination, Black Sacraments, Winterhold Blues, or war against the Daedra. So it said if we choose to trust it, we go between 29 and 30. And if we choose to seek assistance at the college, we go to 31 and 32. Now, wasn't it at the the, the College of Winterhold that our our supposed friend kind of kind of turned their back on us? Are we going back to that same person or is that person dead now? I think they may have died in the in the last chapter. I know a bunch of other blades died in the last chapter. So, but do we really trust a Daedra? Let's go for, let's go for trusting the Daedra. So we either have assassination or we have black sacrament. So if we go black sacrament, we're dealing with the, we're dealing with the Brotherhood of Blood. But assassination could also, I guess assassination is technically also dealing with the Brotherhood of Blood. <laughs> uh, let's go, let's go assassination. This will be our personal quest. This will be our personal quest. Everything else gets discarded. 
So we've got, I'm going to straighten this out here, a little, a little crooked. We've got assassination. I searched for the Yall uh, Roldriff across the reach. He's out on a diplomatic mission trying to broker a truce with, with the Reachmen. Place a quest marker on the mines in the reach. Uh, we will put uh, mines in the reach right here. It's pretty close to us, at least. Only two spaces away. We can do that in one in one hit. Those who decide to seek the assistance of the college can choose between... Oh, okay. Uh, discard any remaining cards. Draw card 216 to begin play and for any special rules. If playing this chapter is a standalone scenario, each player must level up their character <laughs> thrice. They can't just say three times. Uh, level up their character thrice and choose one equipment card and one advanced treasure card. This also applies to any new players joining the campaign. So that we don't have to worry about. So we are drawing card 216 and then we'll be beginning. Fourteen to sixteen. Okay, so we've got the betrayal and revenge with Jarl Rol uh, Rolfdir reinstated in Markarth. The cult of Talos is restored. This violates the White Gold Concordates. And the Emperor has no choice but to give the Thalmor free access to Skyrim. Ulfric is arrested and the cult is banned once more. The Blades search for Moiva Karnai when the ominous voice speaks to them in their dreams. They've attracted the attention of a Daedric prince. She whom you seek serves me, but I've grown tired of her. Do my bidding and she'll be yours. The Dark Brotherhood plans on killing Jarl Rolfdir. Take the initiative. They'll be grateful and help you on your quest. Special rules for this chapter. Each turn after drawing an event card, move all Thalmor Justicator tokens on the board towards the starting player and place a new Thalmor Justicator token on a space. Dang. Chapter failure, if the main quest card reaches its threat token limit, or if there are no remaining Thaldor Justicator tokens available at the beginning of a turn, the chapter's lost. So I guess we're going to have to try and kill a bunch of... We're going to have to try and kill a bunch of Thalmor Justicators. Oh, where was this guy? This guy got knocked. Where was he? Uh-oh. I think he was down here on this space. Okay, so I guess that's that's that. We're just gonna we're gonna begin. We're gonna start our uh, start our round. Let's grab our enemy tokens here so that we can get these uh, justicators ready. I guess they're just oh, it's actually called Thalmor Justicator. Okay, so we're gonna be having to battle a lot of Thalmor Justicators to be able to keep tokens on the board, or we're gonna have to just do really good at uh, we're gonna have to do really good at going through our main quest here. Okay, so we've got two so far. Troll. Three. It's a Daedra. Four. Five. Six. Daedra, 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 Dunmer Cultist. Uh, looks like that is it. Oh, oh, no, that's a Dunmer Cultist. Yeah, looks like that's it. So we have six. We have six Thalmor that can be placed on the board. So that either gives us six turns to get through the entirety of the main quest here, or we have to kill some Thalmor. We're going to have to kill some Thalmor. So, first things first, we need to draw an event card. Oh, I drew two. 
first event that we are getting is, oh god, is Thalmor Assault, of course. Place a Thalmor Justicator token on a space. Move a Thalmor Justicator token towards the closest player. Add two threat tokens. So, okay. Now, did that say that I add one every turn? Each turn after drawing an event, move all Thalmor towards the starting player and place a new Thalmor on the board. Jeez, okay. So we have to place a Thalmor onto a space. We have to add two threat tokens and we're going to have to place another Thalmor afterwards. I think we want to keep them within relative reach so that we can try and kill them. So we're going to place it onto this one here. We've also got to put two threat tokens down. So... From what I understand, if we complete a quest, the threat tokens are removed from it. So does that mean when it goes to the, if it goes to the next card in the set, it would no longer have, it would no longer have any tokens on it? I think that's how, I think that's what they were saying. So for the time being... We're going to put one onto Assassination, and we'll put one onto Righteous Fury, part two. Uh, and now we have to add another Thalmor, and this Thalmor has to move towards us. Is it allowed to, is it allowed to occupy the same space as the, the Vampire? I don't see why it couldn't. So if it's moving one space towards me, it would come here. So now the Vampire and the Thalmor are on the same place, and we need to add another... Thalmor onto the board. We'll put this one up here since we are probably going to have to head, to head to that side of the board at some point anyway. Okay, what are we doing? What are we doing? I guess we can just try and go to the mines here and just work on our quest from the get-go, right? Clear 346, 403, and 389 in a single encounter. A single encounter, so that means I'd be facing all of them at the same time. That seems pretty rough. Although, with our... Uh, with our... Basically, easy mode for <laughs> combat here. And we were still still doing pretty rough for combat, so I can only imagine how hard actual combat is. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Combat, enemy actions, follower actions, player actions, pushing in combat. I'm just trying to look at uh, battling multiple enemies. Fighting multiple enemies, 36. Sometimes players will face groups of enemies. These encounters are particularly dangerous and can prove a challenge for even the most hardened adventurers. When facing multiple enemies, the player set the encounter card on the table side by side from left to right. The leftmost enemy is the one that's closest to the players. This enemy will, this enemy will be the one who takes most of the damage the players deal out. The enemy on the rightmost side is waiting for their moment to strike. If any of the enemy's drawn is a trap encounter. This is resolved first before proceeding to the battle. The example, if one draugr, one bear, and one spear trap are drawn, the player would first encounter the spear trap, and once they have solved the trap... Jeez, excuse me. It's getting late, apparently. Uh, the player would first encounter the spear trap, and once they've solved the trap... They would fight against the Draugr and the Bear. If the player wants to sneak in combat against multiple enemies, use the enemies with the highest sneak value as the difficulty. If the player wants to sneak in combat against multiple enemies, use the enemy with the highest sneak value as the difficulty. 
If the enemy with the highest sneak value has the ambush trait, the player must defend against an ambush from the specific enemy. Otherwise, even if any other encounter card has an ambush trait, the enemy group will not ambush. When rolling for the enemy action, if the icon on the die doesn't match any of the icons on the first leftmost enemy, the players check if it matches an icon on the next enemy to the right, and so on until all enemies have been checked. As a result, even the last enemy rightmost has a chance to attack, even if the rest of the enemies miss. This also means that the more enemies that are involved in a battle, the more likely they are to attack. When the player attacks, they always attack the leftmost enemy. Once the enemy is defeated, their card is dis discarded, and the next enemy becomes the first enemy to be attacked. Damage is only applied to one enemy at a time. If an attack would not deal more heavy damage than an enemy has heavy armor and removes it, any excess damage is not carried over. If an enemy summons a creature to assist them in battle, the creature is placed to the left of the leftmost enemy, thus becoming the first enemy. Well then, that seems like a bit of a pain, but we'll see how that goes. Oh, something I need to do is actually level up my character. Because we do have 10 experience and I didn't, uh, I didn't level up. So let's level up our character quick here. We're going to increase our health once more again. Continuing on with our janky, our janky campaign here. So we now need to remove all level three creatures from the deck, which I think I've already done, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. These are all the creatures that have been discarded. No, I haven't discarded the threes. So we have to take the threes out. Oh no, we have taken the threes out, apparently. I guess they're just farther into the deck or maybe shuffled into the deck. So all the threes already seem to be gone. Okay, now we can choose what we want to do. I think we're just going to head... Are we going to head over to the mines and try this? And try this... Uh... Oh, I need to pick a skill still. I think we're just going to go over to the mines and try this combat. We're going to see how it goes. It should be... Interesting. It'll be the first time we've done combat uh, against multiple enemies. Um, I think we're going to take light armor, which is going to give us plus one dice to any of our sneaks. So we're going to have plus one sneak from our glass armor and plus one from the light armor skill. So that's going to give us five dice to roll on sneak checks, which is pretty nice. And then we're just going to head over to the mine here and we're going to try and progress with our, with our quest. So we need to clear 346, 403, and 389 in a single encounter. That should be interesting. So I guess 346 would be the leftmost card then. Three forty six. We've got Stronghold Guards. Uh she's gonna No, it's fine, I can stay there for now. We're gonna do this backwards like we did before, just for the sake of the camera. Uh our second one is four oh three. We've got Oviren Salith. Well, this isn't going to go well. Was this, was this a bad idea? It isn't just one encounter for the whole thing, is it? Um... Okay, and 389. Uh, 387, 88, 389. Jarl Rolfdeer. Don't tell me we gotta kill the Jarl. 
Okay, so we're gonna do this backwards just for the sake of the camera because I'm gonna put my dice tray over here. Okay, so we have come into the area. Yes, he's the one. Look at him, trying to make peace with the Reachmen. It would be so easy to kill him right now. A blameless crime. Objective. Clear. 346, 403, and 389. So, I guess we're killing the Jarl. Jeez. Um, I need more cubes. I need more cubes. Should have kept this over here, apparently. We'll just keep this out in case we need it again. But we have three enemies here. Although I guess if I'm only attacking the one on the left-hand side first, then it's not that big of a deal, right? So not everyone gets to attack us. Unless this guy doesn't have a thing. So it's not like we're battling all of them at the same time. There's just a better chance of them being able to attack. I do not want to have to deal with... Oviran here. I feel like this is gonna go poorly. I feel like my sneak... Do I have to use my sneak on the guards? Or am I allowed to use my sneak on anybody? I feel like I should be allowed to use my sneak on anybody. Like, if we were doing this normally, combat would be such a pain. I guess... In the case of these guys, you would want to be doing magic damage. But this guy, any damage you do is going to be reduced by six. That's nuts. That's crazy. And look how much damage he does. Jeez, man. I don't think this is going to go well. Is this like setting up for us to fail? Because <laughs> I think we're going to fail. So we're going to try and do our sneak action. Uh, we get five dice. And we, it said we have to do the sneak against the strongest enemy. So we have to get a sneak of at least three. We need three circles. And we did not get them. We got a lot of triangles. A lot of triangles. Only one circle, though, unfortunately. Uh, I have one extra die for my heavy weapon attack. So we fail our sneak, and I guess we're just heading into combat. So we're going to roll for our enemy first. Doing a skull. So he's going to hit us for three heavy damage. So we're going to take one damage. We're going to go for our heavy... We're going to go for our crush, which will do seven. See, like, if we were if we were playing this the way it's supposed to be played, the way it works, which is what I misinterpreted, is that if we do seven damage, he currently has four heavy armor. So he would block four of that damage and only end up taking three damage. So it would move his... Heavy armor down to one, which would make it easier for us on the next turn to do more damage. But that's still pretty nuts once you start accumulating everything, right? Like, that's that's a pain. Like, this guy over here, Oviran, has six heavy armor, six magic armor, and six light armor. How you got six in everything, don't ask me. I don't know. But that's what he's got. So... That's like that's rough if you're playing the game the normal way. Even if you do an attack with six, six damage. Although maybe you're allowed to upgrade cards more than once, right? Because even if you're doing seven damage off the crush, you'd only be doing one damage, <laughs> one damage to him because he heals or he resists six damage, and then he goes and murders everyone for for six heavy damage. Or magic damage. It chooses whichever one is more beneficial to it. So he could hit me for six magic damage. Like, I don't know how you're supposed to kill guys if you don't just move the cubes down the, the amount that you attack. Because all he would need is two attacks to kill me. Right? That's not. So we got our crush. We got our diamond up there. So we're taking one damage because he's doing a swing for three heavy damage. So we take one damage as a result of his attack. We have to move our stamina down one to attempt our crush. So we dealt seven heavy damage. He has 
oh no, we're doing this the way that we were doing it before, so this is gone. In the next game, I will try combat the way it's supposed to be. I think that's a rough combat system. I suppose maybe if I upgraded my armor a bit more, it would have uh, it would have helped, but <laughs> that's something I'll have to keep in mind when we actually start playing properly. So he's taken his damage. I took my damage. We're going into the next round. I don't have any followers or anything either, which would probably be helpful. Uh, an axe. So he's going to be doing three light damage to us. Oh no, he's going to be three heavy damage to us because our glass armor gives us three light damage. So that wouldn't uh, benefit him. It would just cause me to lose his stamina. Uh, we're just going to go for our bash because it's the easier one to go for. We just need two... We just need two circles, which we got. We got three circles. So he is dead. Oh, we don't gain. We don't gain any experience. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, he's, he's done. We've defeated him. And we now have Oviron Salith as our main guy here. And all his tokens are up here to start. What a pain. What a pain. So we got an axe, which he doesn't have anything for, but Jarl Rolf Deer can do a chop for four heavy damage plus two stamina. That's a pain. Okay, um, so Rolf Deer is going to be attacking us for four heavy damage. Do we want to try and evade? Do we want to try and evade? It's not going to do, it's only going to do two damage to us, which isn't too bad. I think we're just gonna go for we're just gonna go for the crush. We're gonna try and get Oviron's health down a bit here. So we're going for the crush. We need a diamond that we did not get. <laughs> we're gonna try and push to get a diamond here. Uh, another circle. Do I want to push again? I'm already running low on stamina here. We're gonna push one more time. There it is. We got our diamond. So he's gonna lose seven heavy armor. And we're going to take two stamina plus two damage. We're down to one stamina. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. Um, huh. So we could rest to regain two stamina, but if Rolf Deer ends up attacking us again, that could really mess us up. What... What I will do, though, is I'm going to activate my ability, my battle cry. We're going to take one health to attack without our enemy attacking us. So we're going to go for our crush. So we need that diamond. This is also our last stamina, which is bad. We did not get a diamond. If I push, can I put my health down? Is that a thing? I think I have to push, so we're going to be dropping our health a bit here in order to push this. We need to try and get that diamond to attack. Oh, triangle. I only have one more push. It's going to drop us pretty low. Anything they hit us with is going to put us into the into the state anyway, so we may as well try and re-roll it. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's all we can do. That's all we can do, so we, we failed that, unfortunately. And... Uh, they weren't doing any attacks because we used our battle cry. So we are now Fireball. He's going to be doing six heavy damage, well, six magic damage to us. So this is going to take us down to... And it's going to do three stamina damage. This would take us down to, to our final blow state. So we could still tank the hit, but we would also lose stamina. We, were, we would lose three stamina, which would be bad. So I think we have to try and block. We have to try and parry it. So we need a triangle. We only get three dice this time. And we got our triangle in the back there. Nice. So we evade the attack, which is good for us because 
that could have turned out pretty rough. That could have been that could have been bad. So we evade. I just want to make sure blocking doesn't have any other uh, any other stuff that goes with it here. Because it's a parry, and I don't know if a parry is different or if it's still just a different way of dodging. Uh, combat, traps, pushing, defensive actions, I guess, 31. Uh, when the enemy attack is too strong, the player may choose to take a defensive action. Defensive actions don't deal any damage and have no additional effect attached to them. When a player takes defensive action and succeeds on the skill test, the enemy action is countered and does not have any effect on the player. Note that this takes the player's round and also consumes stamina or magicka. Does it consume stamina? Oh, that's bad. So I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a hit anyway. That sucks. So it's advisable to take defensive actions only strictly when necessary when an enemy takes a attack that affects all players using a defensive action will only protect the player who is acting not the rest defensive actions are always resolved before resolving enemy actions so i guess we till still take a stamina damage which means we still take one hit which sucks but i guess it's better than going into our final blow state battle axe which puts us to the chop on the Arl here. I think we're gonna we're gonna die no matter what we do here, unfortunately. Well we could rest. We could rest and we could get two stamina back, but that's not gonna do a whole heck of a lot for us. But it's really the only option we got. So we're basically gonna take two damage, which is gonna put us into our final blow, and we're gonna take two stamina, which is gonna put us back exactly where we're at. So that's really all we can do. So again, we're gonna take our rest to gain two stamina. Rolf Deer is going to attack us for four heavy damage, plus two stamina. So we go into our final blow state and we're back to having zero stamina. That's not good. Please get a blank. That's the only thing I can roll that would save me here. That is not a blank, that is a swords. Which again is going to do the chop, so I don't think there's really much we can do here. I think we're just I think we're just dead. I think we're just dead, guys. That would be uh that would be unfortunate. So uh let's just try and go for an attack. Well we can't we can't even go for an attack because we have we we have uh no stamina. It is hard to manage stamina when there's multiple enemies. That's rough. I guess we should have got some stamina potions. Try and buy some stamina potions. Uh, well, I guess that's that. I guess we lose the combat. There's really not a whole lot we can do in this situation. Dodging consumes stamina, which will kill us. So, nothing we can do, unfortunately. So, we have lost our combat, unfortunately. Failure. The Jarl and his guards are too much of a challenge for me. Draw card 236. Discard this card. Well, that sucks. So we're taking card 236. This threat token gets discarded, to my knowledge. This is discarded. We are taking card 236 is what it said. 236. Two thirty six. Two thirty six. boiled. The Jarl of Markarth is dead. The Reachmen are are to be blamed. The city is frantic, and the excess uh, and the accessing Understone Keep is almost impossible. Put a quest marker on to Markarth. I guess we're going back to Markarth, eh? Alrighty. So we failed the combat. I need to double check and what double check what happens when we fail combat. I think we have to put a threat token. I think we have to put a threat token onto the board. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Escaping combat, switching equipment, final blow, critical injuries, thirty-five. I believe we put a token on. 
When player loses all their health, the player who has been critically injured draws an event card and resolves it, then the player takes as many threat tokens as there are players and distributes them between cards. Okay. Okay, so we need to take a we need to take an event first. The event that we got is a touch of madness, demons, active event. When drawing a wilderness card, roll a dice, triangle, draw an event card instead, discard this, uh, discard when discarded, and place 153 on top of the event deck. So anytime we go to a wilderness space, we need to roll a die. Uh, because I rolled, or because I had to draw an event card, I have to... Oh, no, it's each turn after drawing an event card. It's not every time you draw an event card. So this isn't a turn that we draw an event card. So I think we're okay. I think we're okay with this. So we are now going into round two, I suppose, where we no longer have to worry about an event card being drawn. So we have a little bit of... We have a little bit of, of leeway here. Just trying to reposition the camera so we can get a little more in shot here. So we've got a little bit of leeway. I do need to place a threat token down. I need to place a threat token down. We're gonna put that onto hard boiled since we can get rid of it easily when we get up to Markarth there. What do I want to do though? Do I wanna try and go after a Thalmor? The one is in a space with a vampire and I don't wanna attack both of them right now. The other one's way over by Dawnstar which is a pain. I think we're just going to end up going to Markarth. I think we're just going into Markarth. We can hit up the market, maybe try and get some uh, some potions and stuff. We don't have enough to upgrade our gear. I could upgrade my Warhammer again, provided I can upgrade things more than once. We're already playing stuff pretty terribly, so maybe we will upgrade, <laughs> we'll upgrade our Warhammer multiple times. Uh, Markarth... Allows us to get coal for four septums or allows us to go into the heavy armor deck. Um, I think we're just going to go to Markarth. I think that's the best option for now. Well, what do we need? We need, well, we have enough, we have enough coal to upgrade our steel war hammer. So we could do that. So we're going to come to Markarth, and I guess that means we're going to activate our quest, so maybe we aren't allowed to upgrade. I can't remember if you're allowed to upgrade as a free action or if it's one of the single actions that you can take. I don't, I don't remember. Anyways, we have reached Markarth. I decide for a more diplomatic approach and try to probe the guards for more information. Objective, gossip with the guards, roll three dice plus speech, result two diamonds. And I can push with septums. So uh, two diamonds is pretty rough, but we're going to give it a shot here. So we need two diamonds. Those are both triangles. Okay, we're going to spend a septum to push. There's one. We're going to spend another septum to push. Nope. We're going to spend another septum to push. So this is three total now. Nope. We're going to spend another septum to push. This is four total. Five total. Six total. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Seven total. Eight total. Nine total. This is a lot of pushing. There's our other diamond. So, so we have nine, nine total, which is uh, pretty, pretty rough. Uh, where is my bag with all these stuff in it? Okay, so we just lost nine septums. We are now down to twelve septums. I'm pretty. It says I can push with money. I'm allowed to push so long as I have money, right? So we have succeeded in gossiping with the guards. So the guards are more than willing to share what they know. They are scared. Something doesn't sit right with them. Gain four experience. So we're going to gain four experience. Uh, three and 
one. The Jarl was working to stop some Thalmor activity behind Ulfric's back. The plot is more complex than I thought. How is a Daedric prince involved in all of this? How does Moiva fit into the picture? I have to follow the leads I have, and they all point to Ulfric Stormcloak. Option one, the guards give me access to their armory, gain one advanced treasure, and take 246. Or the guards give me access to their treasury, gain four septums, and take card 246. So either way, we're taking card 246. I think I'm going to take the advanced treasure, which is Conjure Dramora Lord. That's pretty nice, eh? Conjure, draw Dramora as a... What symbol is that? Is that just a companion symbol? It is. What symbol is that? It's like a uh, body armor. It is not on here. I found something. Oh, is it the, supposed to be the backpack? No. Maybe it's supposed to be a follower. The only thing I can think of is that it's supposed to be the follower token. And then if you draw a trap, draw again. Okay, so this isn't too bad. But it would require us to have to use a one-handed a one-handed weapon to be able to hold it in our offhand. And we haven't really been doing much with Magicka, but having a follower in battle with us could definitely help. So maybe we're going to have to start investing in... Uh, maybe we're going to have to start investing in... some one-handed weapons so that we can use a follower. So, we're here. I need to take card 246 is what it said I needed. So, we've got 246 dealing with the bears. The Stormcloaks are back in East March with their chief arrested. They're planning their next move. Put a quest token on the wilderness space in East March. So we are now moving to East March. I'm knocking things all over the place. Oh God, East March is all the way over here. Oh, we have two quests over there apparently. I guess we're only allowed to do one of them and we would most likely do the main one. Okay, and we can use the market if we want to, right? So we're gonna spend we're going to spend three septums. We're going to spend three septums in order to look at three cards from the top of the deck. So we've got nine septums left. We're going to take a look at three cards. And we have drawn the Steel Great Sword, a Dwarven Shield, and a Glass Shield. None of this stuff's really going to help me. Does the Steel, is the Steel Great Sword better than what I have? I can do Light Armor, I can do Heavy Armor. And they're both pretty decent, honestly. And then I could upgrade it. I could get an enchantment for it. So that wouldn't be too bad. I think maybe we might actually get this Great Sword and sell our Warhammer. I guess I have to sell any enchantments that are on my thing. Do I get septums for selling stuff with my enchantments? I don't know. I'm not sure. But I think we're going to sell our steel warhammer and we're actually going to pick up this uh we're going to pick up this great sword. So we're going to sell our steel our steel warhammer for 6 and then we're going to buy the steel great sword for 6. So we're not going to we're not going to lose anything as far as septums go. So that's nice. Oh, those are the wrong things. These are what I want. These get shuffled back into the deck. And we now have a steel greatsword. Now I completed my quest, so I don't know if I'm allowed to upgrade my thing, but 
I feel like upgrading is just, just part of the market, right? But maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say for the time being that it's, it's fine to upgrade. We're okay to upgrade. Again, this is still our super jank, totally not playing by the rules, house rules, <laughs> playthrough of the game. So I think we're okay to upgrade. So we're gonna spend our three coal and we're gonna upgrade our great sword here. And it's going to give us an extra two to light damage, which isn't too bad. So we'll now do a total of five light damage on our swing. So that's not terrible. And that's going to end our turn. That's going to end our turn. We are now back to our event deck. So we need to draw an event card. We have drawn a world quest. Daedra Research. A scholar studying the ways of the Daedra needs samples. Bring one to Markarth. Put a quest marker on Markarth, and we are placing two threat tokens. So this is another world quest. So I said we needed to put a quest marker on Markarth, which is where we are. We are at Markarth. So unfortunately, I guess we could choose to stay here and activate it, right? That's a thing we could do. We have to go all the way across the map in order to continue our main quest. So maybe we could just stay here and try and go on with this. Uh, try and go on with this Daedra research here. We'd have to clear card 342, which I'm guessing is a battle against a Daedra. Oh, we also need to put another uh, Thalmor onto the board and move all the Thalmor towards us. Do I put the Thalmor on first? Move all Thalmor. So the Thalmor all move first, closer towards us. Where's the other one? It's around here somewhere. Uh, what is the quickest way to us? I guess this way. And we will put the other one up here for the time being. So we now need to decide what we want to do this turn. We could try and take on one of the Thalmor. Would get us some experience. Possibly get us some items, which could be useful. We also only have three more turns before we fail the quest, so we need to start trying to take them out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That one isn't quite close enough yet for us to take advantage of it. We could move two and try and take the one there. We could move two and try and take the one up to the west of solitude at the top of the board there. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess we're okay for the time being, right? We still have a few turns before we have to start taking them on. So I think, I think we're okay for now. I think we're just gonna start moving towards our quest. Uh, one, two, three, four, four. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Would put us on the vampire. We could fight the vampire. Could give that a shot, or we could come down to these ruins. But the ruins are much scarier now. I think we're just gonna try and take on this vampire. One enemy sounds better than three, so we're gonna move one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to take on this vampire, which is card 376, apparently. Three seventy one. Vampire three seventy six. He's got five magic armor and three light armor. So we're going to try and sneak on him first. So we get our five dice for sneak, which is nice. We get our five dice for sneak. Correct? We still have five? 
light armor and our glass armor. So we need three circles to pull off this sneak, which we got. We got four circles, pretty good. So we're gonna do a slash attack for free, which does four heavy damage. So we're just gonna knock this light armor off right away. Yeah, that works. And we're actually playing by the rules properly this time <laughs> for, for this particular instance. Okay, so let's begin our combat here. We need to do six damage to their magic damage. If they use drain, they heal two to their damage. So that's not great. Well, I mean, I may as well, I may as well use my battle cry, right? There's really no reason not to. It's one enemy. So we're going to activate our battle cry to attack it without it attacking us. Uh, we're going to go for one, two, three. We could do three and three. Our slash attack is actually more likely than our swing is on this one. We need a triangle for our swing. We only need two circles for our two circles for our um, heavy attack. So we're going to exhaust one stamina and we're going to go for our we're going to use our Battle cry. So we take one health and we're going to go for, um, I guess we're going to go for slash. Two circles. Oh, one circle. Two, two diamonds. Well, or two triangles, sorry. So we're going to push with our stamina. We need a second circle. There it is, two circles. So we're doing four heavy damage, which is going to bring this down to two. And we are now going to head into the next combat phase. So let's see if they get to do something. A fireball, which they don't have. Nice. We're going to defeat the vampire. Go us. Uh, we're going to go for the swing. We're going to go for the swing doing three light damage. So we need a triangle. Oh, it's my dice. And we got three triangles. Good job. So we have defeated the vampire. Nice. We gained two experience. And we've defeated the vampire. <laughs> we need five more experience in order to level up on the next thing. Uh, I think there's still some more vampires on the board. So we're going to hold on to this for the time being, just in case we need it again. Don't want to accidentally discard it. We'll keep it over here for the time being. So this vampire has been defeated. You can return to the bin of enemies. And that is our turn. So we now get our action without drawing an event card. Where do we want to go? Now we could try and take on a Thalmor. We would still be able to move into our... Well, we could move into our... Next objective right now. Um, hmm. Do I want to just go for our objective or do I want to get another Thalmor? We are going to be putting another Thalmor on, the, Thalmor on the board in the next turn. But we can start doing combat in the next round. I think we're going to try and, try and uh, proceed with our quest here. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Five, and we're going to do our dealing with the bears, trying to get on with our main quest here. They listen to me, but they seem skeptical of my ability to deal with the Thalmor, and they ask me why they should get involved. Objective, demonstrate your tactical skills. Roll three dice plus light armor or heavy armor. I need three triangles. I can push with coal, which I don't have any more of. So I just need to hope that we get... I just need to hope that we get 
a good amount of triangles. Uh, so, plus my light armor or heavy armor. Well, I have the light armor and the heavy armor skill. Do I roll both or one or the other? If it's one or the other, I would get... Three. No, I would get four, sorry. Because I have the light armor skill. And I have the heavy armor skill. So I would get four either way. But I'm also wearing light armor. Does that count? <laughs> I don't know if that counts or not. That's okay. Um, so we need we get four dice and we need to roll three triangles. Which we did not. We did not. And I have no coal to push, so we failed. Dang, we failed. That's bad. Okay. They are even more confused than before. They know about Moiva's location, but nothing else. Gain two card 254 and discard this card. So we need 254. 254. Moiva Karnai is holed up in the manor house in Hafengar. Gain six experience. Place a quest token on this card. When there are as many quest tokens on this card as the number of players, draw card 139. So I guess we gain six experience and we just get to draw card 139 because we're the only one playing. Six experience is actually going to allow us to level up. So that's great. We're going to take this chance to level up right now. That puts us at 12 total experience. So we're going to put our health up to the max here. I think that's the I think that's the way to go here is getting ourselves some more health. Because we've been doing pretty rough for health in battles, especially multi, multi-level battles. That's pretty hard. Uh, we also need to take out all level 4 monsters from the deck. I mean, this would be a good time to use the uh, use the Conjure Dramora Lord, I suppose, since we have all these high level. So we have all these high level monsters in the. We have all these high level monsters in the thing. I didn't realize how squeaky the floors were until I started uh, recording. Because I swear, every time I move, every time I move, the floor squeaks. <laughs> Okay, so we need to draw card number 139. 38, 39. The, mm. the Reckoning. Place a global quest marker on the forest space in Hafengar. So this is our current quest, and it has four threat tokens on it. So we have to place a quest marker on two. Hafengar. Where's Hafengar? Hafengar. Oh, God, all the way on the other side of the map. It's really dragging us around this time, eh? Uh, Hafengar, Hafengar. Up here where this uh, Thalmor is is where we need to get to. Okay, that's all right. Okay, so I guess that's the end of our turn, right? We did our thing. That's all we can really do here. So we now have to draw an event card, which means that the Thalmor are going to move closer to us and another Thalmor is going to hit the board. History repeats. Draw the first five cards from the event discard pile 
shuffle them and place them on top of the deck. Was I supposed to keep all the event cards? I didn't know I was supposed to keep all the event cards in the, uh, I was supposed to keep all the event cards in the discard. I do not have five event cards in the discard. I guess I'm going to take the one event card. Shuffle them and place them on top of the event deck. Okay, I guess we're putting in one. <laughs> Discard this card. And we are placing two foot tokens. Uh, we're going to place one on a home in need part two. And we'll place one onto the reckoning. And I think we're going to... Oh, we need to move the... Oops, we need to move the Thalmor first. So the Thalmor are going to move towards us. So this one's coming here. This one, I don't even know what the quickest path to us would be. This one's going to come here. This one would make its way back here. So it's with the vampire again. And we need to put another one onto the board. So let's put it here because we can reach this on our way over to our quest. Okay. Result. What are we going to do? We could fight this Thalmor that's here. One, two, three, four, five. You know what? I think the better option for us would be to put it here. Closer. Closer to us. They want to be as close to us as possible, right? But it gives us a, it also gives us a chance to use our entirety, the entirety of our move, and try and kill it. So if we go one, two, three, four, we can try and take out this Thalmor, which is three seventy-three. Oh, that is 372. Those are brigands. Thalmor, Justicator. So, they have five magic damage and three light damage. We're going to attempt a sneak on this Thalmor Justicator here. So, we're going to get five dice. And we need to roll two circles. That should be good. We need to roll two circles to get this sneak attack off. We, we didn't. We rolled no circles. No circles. Jeez. Okay, well, I guess we're just going into combat then. It's combat time. A sword, so he's going to be doing Firebolt to us for two magic damage. So we're going to try and attack with our, our Slash, because we want to do that heavy damage to get, his, uh, to get his armors down. So we get four dice, since we have the heavy armor perk. Or, sorry, since we have the two-handed perk, is what I meant. We need to exhaust one stamina. And we need two circles. Which we got. Three circles. So we get to do four heavy damage. So we're going to get rid of his light armor. We're going to take two, two damage and magic damage. That's okay. We've still got quite a bit of health. Let's go into the next round. A lightning bolt. He's going to do ice spikes on us for three magic damage as well as two stamina. So we're going to... We're going to go for swing this time. It's only going to do three damage. Three light armor damage, which we're going to be able to apply to his magic damage. But... It only costs one circle, so that'll be... Or, sorry, one uh, triangle in order to activate it, not one circle. So we need one triangle in order to get our swing off. And we got a triangle. Nice. Okay, so we do... He does 
three damage to us plus two stamina. So two stamina, three health. And we deal three light damage, which is going to put him down to two magic damage left. And this is going to be our chance to use our battle cry. We're going to take one health. We're going to try and get an attack off without being attacked back. We're going to go for swing once again. We just need one triangle. And we got it. So we have defeated the Thalmor Justicator. We're going to gain three experience as well as two septums. Uh, so if I get rid of these and flip this over to the five, we are now up to 11 septums. And we're going to gain three experience. And we've gotten rid of a Thalmor Justicator. I'm going to keep this over here with the uh, Vampire, since we're probably going to need it again. But we luckily got rid of one of these guys, which prolongs our chance to succeed. Okay, so that ends our turn. And we now get a free action without having to draw an event. So what do we feel like doing? We could do one, two, three, four, five, and go to solitude would allow us to, would allow us to look through some decks, but we have to pay two. No, we have to pay an additional coin for anything that we buy. That's kind of a pain. But, you know, solitude, solitude. Uh, Morthal, one, two, three, four. Three, four, five. Oh, we can get to our one, two, three, four, five. We can actually get to our main quest right now. I think we might do that. I think we're just going to go into our quest. So if we go, oh, no, I thought this was a path. Never mind. We'd be one off. So we could go one, two, three, four. We could get up to the mines up there, but that wouldn't do that wouldn't do much for us. So I think we're gonna go into solitude. I think we're gonna go into solitude and we may not even check out the market. We might explore though. Although exploration usually leads to quests, and I already have quests. I'm only allowed to have three. Maybe we'll stop in Morthal. Can I do anything in Morthal? Not allowed to sell soul gems in Morthal, apparently. I don't know if we really want to go to Morthal. I don't know if that's something we want to do, honestly. We might just go up to the mines. That's a rough battle, though. Human, animal, and an enchanted being. But we might be okay getting into that battle. That's not too bad. They are going to be all really high levels, though. It'll probably give us enough experience to level up, though. Uh, I think we're, can I get to a cave? We could get to that cave over there, right? One, two, three, four, five. We could explore a cave. It would be animal, animal, human. The animals usually are easier to my understanding. So let's do that. Let's go explore the cave. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. And we'll check out this cave. So we need to do animal, animal, human. So our first one is a mammoth. Okay. Animal and then a human. So we're, we're apparently we're going to try and sneak up on this. Uh, we're going to try and sneak up on this mammoth here. So we need three circles to get a sneak off on this mammoth. They have quite a bit of damage, eh? So, magic, light, heavy. 
Okay. Three circles. Three circles. So we got our sneak attack off. So we're going to do our slash attack against it, which is going to take this out. Even if we were playing normally, that would take it out. Four minus two is two. So we've gotten rid of his heavy damage. That's going to help us out. That's going to help us out. Because we're not going to be able to use it to get his light armor down. And we can use either of our attacks to get his magic armor down. So that'll be good. Okay, so let's get into battle. Oh, nothing on the first turn. Perfect. Let's just zoom in here a bit. I realized I didn't, I didn't zoom in. So nothing for the first battle. Perfect. We're going to go for our slash attack, which means that we need two circles, which we got. So we're going to do our slash. We're going to get rid of his magic armor. And he does nothing to us. Going into our next thing. A skull. They're going to do crush, which is eight. Eight heavy damage, which is nuts. We're going to take six damage if this hits us. So this might actually be a good opportunity to dodge because six damage is nothing to scoff at, especially when we have multiple enemies to go through. So I think we're going to try and do our parry action. So we're going to do one stamina. I only get three dice for this because I don't have any block stuff. We need two circles to succeed. Uh, we did not get it. We're going to try and push this. Get another circle. It's not another circle. We're going to do one more push. Oh, God. That was two, right? I have one more. Oh, boy. We're doing our, we're doing our final push. Oh, we still didn't get it. So we lost a bunch of stamina and we just took six damage. So that's pretty rough. Four, five, six. That's no good. Uh, okay, going into the next into the next combat round. I should have just attacked at that point. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's okay. Let's roll a skull. Going for crush again. This is gonna put us into our final blow state. Do we have to try and block again? I feel like that's going to be a bad idea. But 8 damage is going to put us into our final. And we have 2 enemies still to try and get through. So that's going to be a little that's going to be a little rough. That is going to be a little a little rough. Oh, jeez. I think we have to try and block we're going to take one stamina. We're going to try and block. We need two circles. Oh, of course we didn't. And I can't push anymore. So we're just, we're taking damage. We're down to our, our final blow. This is it. We might lose this combat because of this dang mammoth. Lightning bolt is trample, which is six damage. I have to, I have to try and block. That's all I can do. All I can do. Any damage is gonna kick me out of this. So so long as I have stamina. We we didn't get it. Oh my god. I can't I can't push anymore. Like how are we not getting two circles? How are we not getting two circles? We're taking so we're dead. We take the damage anyway because we didn't block it. Well that sucks. We've been defeated. We have been defeated. That is unfortunate. So, we need to place a threat token onto the board somewhere, right? We're going to put it onto the Reckoning here since we're pretty close to getting to it. And we have to draw an event card and read it, which is the one that we discarded previously. Thalmor Assaults, Justicators on the road. Place a Thalmor Justicator token. On a space, move a Thalmor Justicator towards the closest player. Place two threat tokens. That is unfortunate. So we're going to place them on the world quests here for the time being. Oh, geez. Okay. 
Uh, we need to move a thou more towards us, which I guess would be... Is this one closest? Yeah, this one's closest, so it would come up here. And we need to place a thou more on the board. That's bad. I guess we'll place it... Here? With the vampire? I guess? We need to start trying to kill Thalmor. We're about to have... Okay, this is getting rough. This is getting rough. So that's the end of the round. We need to draw an event card. We've got trolls from the north. Move a troll token towards the nearest stronghold. If it reaches the stronghold, degrade it and remove the token. If there are no troll tokens on the board, place a troll token on a forest space. Place two threat tokens. Is there a troll on the board already? I don't think there is. We have Daedra, and we have the Thalmor, and we have a couple vampires still who keep moving to random places. But we don't have a troll yet, so I guess we have to put a troll onto the board. And we need to place another two threat tokens, which is starting to pile up on us. Uh, troll. We're just gonna place him over here. And we need to place two threat tokens. So we're gonna put one onto Righteous Fury, put one onto this contract up here. Okay. Uh, oh, I don't even remember what I did. Did I place. Did I place a. No, I read the event. From losing the combat. I just drew, drew that one, which means I need to move all the Thalmor towards me. So this one's going to encounter me, so I guess I have to encounter it before I start my turn. That one's going to go there. This one's going to come here. I think that's all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And another one has to be placed on the board. This is getting rough. It's getting rough. And I guess we have to encounter this Thalmor before we take our turn. So at least we'll be able to hopefully get one off the board, which should ease, ease our pain a little bit. Is that heavy or is it magic? It's magic. Okay. We're going to try and do... Do we get to even try and do a sneak attack on this thing because it encountered us? I feel like we wouldn't get to do a sneak a sneak attack in that in that event. So we're just going to go right into combat. Because I think because it encountered us, we wouldn't be able to do a sneak attack. Uh, it's going to be doing Firebolt, which is going to do two magic damage to us. We are going to... We are going to go for... Our slash. So we're going to use one stamina. And we're going to need to get two circles. Now you give me circles, of course. So we're going to get rid of the light armor by doing four heavy damage to its light armor. And it's going to do two magic damage to us. So we're going to take two damage. Okay, next round. Uh, nothing. Perfect. I always like seeing nothing. We're going to go for our uh, our swing, since it does five light armor. We're going to... We need one triangle. Oh, we did not get a triangle, but we can push. We can push. Not a triangle. We can push again. Not a triangle. This is the last time we're allowed to push. There's our triangle. Thank you. So we're going to do five damage. We're going to take this Thalmor out. We're going to gain three experience and two septums. Three experience. One, two septums. I have... I have actually inadvertently been doing solo combat correctly <laughs> for the last few fights. So that's always good. 
we're kind of doing things better. Um, okay, so we defeated them. They're off the board. They're off the board. They're off the board. We now get to take our turn, and I think we're going to go up to our quest. So we're just going to go one, two, three, and we're going to try and continue on with our quest here. The day has come. You gather at the entrance of Moiva's hideout. Oh, I guess we're... I guess this is it. Ready to stop her once and for all. You've been preparing for this long, uh, for a long time. The traitor is also there with her. Oh, the traitor is also there with her. They will pay for what they did. Objective clear. 356, 357, 358, and 362 in a single encounter. It wants us to fight four people at the same time. Is that what singling like I feel like single encounter means the same time, right? Or is is an encounter split up like a dungeon encounter would be? I feel like a single encounter means all of them at the same time. But that's rough. Four people at the same time. There's no way we're going to beat this. We couldn't even beat the last guys that we had to battle all together. Well, I guess we're doing all of them at the same time. That's what a single encounter means to me. So, this is going to come here. Are we still... Well, we're kind of zoomed in. That should be fine. So we need 356, which I assume is the first one. I don't think we're going to win this. This is, uh, this is going to be a rough time. 356, we've got Moiva's guard. 357... We've got a Thalmor Justicator. Oh, there's multiple. No, 373. I guess there's different ones in here. I guess it's because this is one that's specific to the... No, it's exactly the same. It just has a different photo. Huh. Interesting. Uh, we've got 358, which is Corellian the Hunter, who is the one who betrayed us. And we have 362. Uh, 51, 60, 61, 62. Moiva Karnai. Uh, okay, so this is a lot of, this is a lot of guys. This is a lot of guys. I don't see this going well. I think we're about to fail this quest, if I'm being completely honest. But uh, let's start off with our sneak. Start off with our sneak. We get five dice. And we need to get three circles. Which we did. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our slash in order to get rid of its light armor. This is going to allow us to get rid of its heavy armor a lot easier. I've inadvertently started actually doing combat properly so that's nice i guess uh let's go for their attack oh nothing well that's a good roll nice that is a good first roll uh we're gonna go for our slash because it'll do five damage we can get rid of the heavy armor so this is going to do uh we get four dice four dice and we need one triangle oh, i need to put all my stuff back up to max here so we're gonna exhaust one stamina and we need one triangle, which we got. Nice. So we're going to do five light armor, which we're going to use to take its heavy armor away. All righty. A fireball. He doesn't have one. However, the Thalmor Justicator does. So it's going to be doing two magic damage to us. We're just going to try and take this first guy out. So we're going to go for our swing once again. We're going to try and... We're going to try and uh, take it out. So we need to get one triangle, which we did. So Moiva's guard has been defeated. I'm just going to put it there for now, which means the Thalmor Justicator, 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 comes into 
our target zone here. Oh, another nothing. Nice. Good roll. Good roll. Uh, okay, what are we going for here? I guess we're going for our slash to get rid of its light armor. And it'll make getting the other stuff down easier. It's supposed to be here. So we need one... No. Our swing. Our swing, sorry. Not our slash. So we need one triangle in order to get this. And we did. Nice. So its light armor is gone. Did I hit it? Did I hit the dice? That wasn't on the battle axe. That wasn't on the battle axe. That was a nothing. I must have hit the dice. I'm like 100% sure that was a nothing when I rolled it. I'm counting it as a nothing. Pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, battle axe, which brings us to Corellian, which is aim. It's going to do four heavy damage to us, which is only going to deal two damage to us. So that's not terrible. We're going to go for our swing once again, so we need a triangle. We're going to use one stamina. We got it. We're going to get rid of its magic armor here. And on the last round here, we're going to try and take it out. If we can get another nothing, that would be great. That is not a nothing. It's going to be doing ice spikes to us, so it's going to deal three magic armor plus... Three magic armor plus, uh, sorry, three magic damage plus two stamina, which is a bit of a pain. I feel like if I succeed my attack and would kill it, its attack shouldn't count. But since they get to attack first, I take the damage regardless. So we are going to... We are going to just try and kill it, I guess. I guess we're just going to... Well, actually, we could consume one stamina and try to dodge it, right? Instead of losing two stamina, we could just take one. So I think we're going to try and dodge because I think it's the better option. So we get three dice. We need to get two circles, which we got. Nice. So we avoided. So we only lost one stamina that round, which is better than losing two. And health, I suppose. A nothing. I'm always happy with nothings. Uh, we're going to go for our swing. So we need one triangle, which we got. Nice. So we consume one stamina. The Thalmor Gisticator has been defeated. We now come up to Corellian the Hunter, the Betrayer. The Betrayer. We have to take them out. They just have light and heavy armor. Okay, rolling. Thunderbolts. So we're going to be getting attacked with Claws by Moiva Karnai for three heavy damage. So we'll take one damage, which isn't too bad. I think we're going to take this time to rest so that we can gain two stamina back. And we're just going to take that one damage. Because one damage isn't too bad. That's not too bad. Uh, we're also going to use this next action in order to use our battle cry, which is going to allow us to attack without them rolling. So we're going to go for, what are we going to go for? Five damage minus four. We'd only be doing one damage. We'd only be doing one damage. That's rough. I have no magic damage. <laughs> um... I, well, I mean, if we were doing combat the way we were before, which we were earlier in the battle, but we'll try and do it the way it's supposed to. So if I attack with if I attack with my light attack, my swing, I'm only gonna be doing one damage to it. Next turn I'll do two damage. Turn after that I'll do three damage. So it's gonna take another three turns to take Corellian out at this rate, which is a bit of a pain. Not sure how I feel about this whole armor system, but I guess. I should upgrade my weapons more or get better weapons. I suppose coming into the final battle of the chapter with the steel greatsword wasn't the best idea. But in any case, we're going to go for our swing. So we need one triangle, which we did not get. That's unfortunate. We're going to try and push 
And there's our triangle. So we do... Oh, it's on four. Oh, yeah, but we do five. So it does one damage. That's a pain. That's a pain. Our stamina is starting to go, too. We need, we need our stamina back. Okay, they're doing shoot for five. Five heavy. So we're going to take three damage from that. That's... Fine, I guess, for the time being. That's fine. We're going to try and do our swing. We need a triangle, which we got. It's down here. So they're going to take two damage this time. We're going to take three damage, unfortunately. We're getting pretty close to being dead here. It's not good. I wish resting gave us health back. There's no way for us to get our health back unless we're... Oh, am I supposed to get health back for clearing? Because I'm, I'm a cannibal, right? I'm supposed to get health back for clearing human enemies. So I should have four health back in total. I'm taking that four health back. I'm eating these guys, man. That four health is going to help us. One, two, three, four. I should have that four health. I totally forgot about my cannibal perk. After clearing any human, heal two HP. I'm just... I, I murder their friends and I just eat them in the middle of combat, apparently is how this works. Okay, so... Did I... Did I do their... Th I did. I just did her, her, her shoot, right? So I need to... I need to roll the combat die. An axe. They're going for aim, which is going to do... Four heavy damage to us, so we're going to take two. So we're going to try and get rid of this light armor. We're going to do swing. So we need a triangle, which we got. We consume one stamina. Light armor is now gone. And we take two damage because they're using aim for four heavy damage. So we take two damage. Okay. We're getting low on stamina here. I'm going to start needing to get some more some stamina back. And this is the perfect time to do it. Anytime they do nothing, good time to rest. So we're going to rest to gain two stamina back. An axe. Again, they're going to be doing two damage, which isn't bad. We're going to try and take her out here by going for our swing, which will do five light damage. We need a triangle. Which we got. Nice. We have defeated Corellia and the Hunter, which is going to give us two health back because we're going to cannibalize her. And that brings us to the one who sought out, I suppose, to get rid of the blades, Moiva Karnai. This is the final test. Alrighty. Let's do this. This should be, uh, should be interesting. We're still doing decent for health. Nothing's good. I'm going to take the time to rest to get our stamina back. A sword. They're going to be doing claw for three heavy armor, which is going to do one damage to us. Uh, her heavy armor is the lower of the two, so we're going to go after the heavy armor. It's only going to do one damage right now, but that's, that's fine. That's fine. We're going to go for our slash. We need two circles. Which we got. Nice. So one stamina consumed and one heavy armor lost from Moiva Karnat. An axe. Again, claw for one damage, which is fine with me. I'm not going to lose sleep over one damage. We got our triangle. Oh no, the two circles is what we needed, right? We didn't get our two circles. We only got one circle. So I need to push... To try and get another circle. Oh, jeez. One more push. There's our circle. Nice. So we're doing three, four... Uh, so we're only doing one damage again there. That's okay. We'll do two damage on this next one, which will get rid of her heavy armor. So that'll be good. A fireball. She's going to stab for four magic damage. That's going to... That's going to do a bit of damage to us. So I think we're going to try and dodge this one. So we're going to use one stamina. And we're going to... We need two circles. We got them. Nice. Okay, so we only lost our one stamina. No damage taken on that one. Oh, skull's bad. Backstab for two plus three stamina loss. That is not good. That would take quite a bit off of us. 
I think what I need to do here is I'm going to take that two damage and I need to rest to get my, my stamina back because we're at, we're only at one stamina. So it's going to drop us down to zero stamina, but we're not going to take additional damage. I guess my other option would be to try and evade again, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rest. It's going to bring my stamina up. We're taking two damage. We're losing three stamina. That was a rough hit, but there wasn't much we could do. Oh God, another one. This is bad. I have no stamina. All I can do is try and dodge, which is going to cause me to lose a health because of my because of my um, stamina loss there. So we're going to try and dodge. Two circles. Our dodge was successful. That's good. Can we please get a nothing? I know the odds are stacked against me here. Or at least a claw. A claw would be good too. There we go. Thunderbolt. Okay, she'll only be doing one damage to us. So we're going to take this time to get some stamina back by resting. Oh, I've been... Oh, no, that was on my old one. I was going to say, I was supposed to be getting extra stamina for, for uh, resting. But that was on my old... That was on the Steel Warhammer. Okay, so we rested. Uh, we took one damage. Can we get another... Another claw. I think we just need to start attacking. We just need to start attacking. So we're going to take that one damage. I'm going to go for my slash. So I need two circles. Which we got. Nice. So I take one damage from her claw. Her heavy armor is now gone. So we're going to need at least four more turns to be able to take her out. We might be able to, depending on how much damage she does. Depending on what our rolls are, we could still succeed this. It's possible we could succeed. Oh, got to be in the dice tray. <laughs> That's a good roll. It was an axe. I, I suppose I could make it an axe, but got to roll in the dice tray, right? The, the rules always, if it goes off the table, you re-roll it. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't on the table. On the table. <laughs> So she's going to do nothing this turn. Do I want to take stamina or do I just want to go for an attack? Getting stamina would be useful because we need it. I think I'm going to rest. I've only got two stamina left. So I think we're going to rest to get some stamina back. An axe. So she's going to be doing one damage to us. We're going to go for our slash. So we need two circles we got nice so we're gonna do four damage to her light armor one two three four and we're gonna take one damage that is not good can we get another nothing a nothing would be nice oh nice a nothing perfect once again we're gonna go for our slash two circles which we got nice her light armor is gone we're two more turns guys two more turns we could do it we, we might we might do this. Uh, sword, that's just a regular that's just a regular attack. That's fine by me. Uh, we can now that her light armor is gone, we can actually go for our swing, which will do five damage. So we could actually end this right now. All we need is one triangle. Oh, and we got it off the bounce, bounced off the wall, gave us the triangle. We did it. We have taken out Moiva Karnai. We had one HP left, so that's that was pretty good. Well, I guess I guess we cannibalize her afterwards, so we ended the battle with three HP. We did it. We succeeded. I, I can't believe we did that. We even did the combat properly, I believe. So that that was pretty awesome, honestly. Success, my little pawn. You did it. Look at her begging for her life. Finish her. She needs to die. The voice in your head, Mephila, commands you to kill Moiva. The Khajiit pleads, spare me. You don't need to kill me. Let me live and I will help you save the rest of your people. I can stop the Thalmor. I will be your agent in their ranks. Her argument is convincing, but the need for revenge is strong. Do we kill Moiva or do we spare Moiva? She organized this entire thing to kill all of the blades. 
do we let that go unpunished? She says she can help us with the Thalmor, which makes me think we're going to have to clear all the Thalmor on the board. And it could help us out. But she plotted to destroy our people. She plotted to destroy our people. I think we have to kill her. I'm sorry, Moiba, but I think we have to kill you. So we're going 265, or sorry, 267. 267. We're killing Moiba. Two sixty four, two sixty five, sixty six, two sixty seven. I am so proud of you, my lovely lackey. Let her blood flow. This is what happens to those who bore me. Keep that in mind. With Moiva dead, the Thalmor start an investigation. They hunt down every blade in Skyrim. Your people doomed. Revenge is an expensive luxury. Oh, I got everyone killed. Oh no. Flip this card. For the next 25 years, you make yourself at home in Skyrim. You build a house, make friends and a family, and leave your adventuring days behind. Every night, however... Nightmares keep you awake. The screams of your fellow blades murdered by the Thalmor. You could have stopped that. You didn't. Survivor's guilt can drive anyone crazy. Mephila constantly speaks to you, making outrageous demands. You know the day will come when she bores of you. Congratulations. You won. We did it. We completed chapter three and campaign one of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the adventure game, game, the adventure game by Bethesda Game Studios and Modifius Entertainment. Trademark, trademark, trademark. Um, we did that final battle properly. We did that final battle the correct way you're supposed to do combat, as far as I know anyway. So I think the game could work out I think I kind of like it the way that I was playing better, if I'm being completely honest, because it's a little less luck dependent. But, you know, I, I had a good time. I had a good time playing uh, playing this game. Next time we set the game up, I think we're going to... I think we're going to do Free Roam, or maybe we'll start Campaign 2. But whatever we end up doing, we will do our absolute best to actually play the game properly the way it's supposed to be played. So that's everything for me for the time being, I suppose, guys. Uh, I am going to now reorganize all these cards that were discarded during the course of this campaign to get everything back in order. <laughs> that's probably going to take me a little bit. So thank you guys very much for stopping by. If you've played Skyrim, the adventure game, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Did you enjoy it? Uh, did you not enjoy it? Uh, give me the reasons why. If seeing this video made you want to pick the game up, let me know that down below too. It's always interesting to see what kind of stuff people pick up based on the stuff we take a look at on the channel here. Uh, if you are over on Instagram, you can follow us at the Board Games Are For Everybody Instagram page. We just post pictures of the games we're playing as well as games that we pick up and you can just come out, come, come hang out and talk about games and yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys very much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I will see you all next time. Until then, just remember the board games are for everybody and until then, peace.